What's that? Your phone on vibrate? Uh, is Go. it? Is the phone on vibrate? Oh, okay. No. I have a bar of of a signal down here. So vibrate. Oh, is it on vibrate? Is it on vibrate? Yes. Yeah. Yes, my bad. <laughs> I was just like, it was like my phone on. No, okay, okay, we're good. Yeah, I well, I care about your cellular yeah. service. Yeah. Do you have great service on here? Uh, no, no, it, I didn't think bad. So. Well, like. <laughs> we're in a basement. I can't do anything about that. Anyway, sorry. Uh, welcome back to uh, Studio Four Seven Five. I am your host, uh, Tim Duncan. I cannot wait to stop saying that. Eventually, people are just gonna know who I am. Over time. Hopefully. Over time. But yeah. they don't know who you are. I'm uh, right. with my buddy uh, Marvin today. How you doing, Marvin? What's up, man? I'm good. What's up, dude? Yeah, I'm good. Dude, first off, it's my birthday, okay. so I'm going to be a cock. Yeah, and happy that. birthday, yeah, man. Yeah, dude. Like, for Thank real, you. Bro. For real, man. Yes. This thing. Um, It's my birthday. I haven't seen you in like fucking three years. It's been a minute. Like, a while. I came over here randomly to just record a demo. Was that last year? It might have been last year. Like, well, it had to have know. been because last year was when I was doing all that music, and yeah. I was, I yeah, it was last year. It was only once though, so like in between then, it might have been like a long time. Yeah, it was a while. It was, it was a while. You had me running up a uh, a giant hill at the reservoir. That's right. Before then, and you was like, "You're a fucking psycho." Yeah, I was about to die. I have asthma. I can't do that. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, I, I hit right. you with the left left uh, real quick. Oh, yeah, I was just like, hold on, man. Like, this is too much. But, you did you know, it, though. Yeah, yeah, I did it. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I crawled a little bit, but I made it up there. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, dude. That hill at James Brown's tough. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. But, I mean, uh, so so I, well, let me first say, like I always do, we're going to take a break in about 2025 because yeah. my camera can't last that long. Okay. Uh, waiting for my spot. <laughs> I'm waiting for my sponsorship from Viagra or Stens <laughs> or something. Um, but we're gonna take a break about 2025. Uh, for the first part, I just want to, you know, what do you do, Marvin? Um, I deliver mail by day. Um, I love my fiance 24 seven, and uh, I make music whenever I can, and that's pretty much like my life. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Damn. He came out. He was like, I love my wife 24-7. Yeah, you already know what it is. Shit. <laughs> Holy fuck. Role model over here, dude. Yeah, I try. <laughs> yes, dude. So, uh, I don't give a shit about your 9 to 5. Yeah. So, no one gives a fuck about their 9 to 5. I don't. But what I do want to talk about is your music. Yeah. So, man, how long have you even been doing music? Um, Because that's like how we met. Yeah. Uh, I started playing guitar in... 2009 and uh did the band thing a couple years later and took like six years off and now i'm back doing was it really that long yeah it was around that was was uh was states away no wow wow wrong band altogether uh i mean it's 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 the same era so like uh, yeah and but like um 2013 and then uh i jumped into weather vane in 2017, so I, it wasn't that long. Uh, I came back playing bass, and uh, started better anyway in 2018. And so, yeah, it wasn't six years. It was like four. Yeah, I but you know, time yeah. feels like that yeah. when you stop playing music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was like four, and um, you know, uh, after playing in Weathervane, it was just like I just I just want to keep doing this now. Yeah. So you got, but see. Like, it's kind of tough because I've never been, like, in an actual band, so yeah. I don't even know what that kind of, like, taste feels like. It's fun. It's fun. I mean, and, and just, I feel like a lot of people have, like, a misconception for, like, why bands do what they do, but, like, I know, like, the reason why I play music is just for the fun of it and just the satisfaction of just being able to create art and uh, being able to share it. Uh, it isn't necessarily about the response all the time, but the response is like what gets you hooked. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know dude. So like, and I, I, I do know that feeling cause I'll like write a song or a track or something like that and send yeah. it over just to like one person. It, but if that one person's like, yo, this is fire. It I'm makes like, you want to keep going. Oh yeah. shit. I got to do another one like right now. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's always just extremely fun and rewarding to just share art. I mean, if I was just 
somebody who was like a painter or anything like that, I'd be doing it in the same capacity that I'm doing this right now. Mm -hmm. And so, um, right now, uh, just, uh, when it comes to all my musical ventures, I try to keep it like as, uh, uh, I guess cohesive as I can, uh, with better anyway, uh, when it comes to this next project and stuff like that. Cause we've been, uh, you know, with with me always experimenting into different genres and stuff like that, I don't want to like try and like make whatever band I'm in do something that nobody wants to do. Yeah, and so making sure that everything makes sense and everything like in Weather Vane and make everything makes sense and better anyway, just like it's important to me. So uh, just have to try not to make things overlap at times right and it's tough with you know doing that because especially with being a powerful musician um i appreciate that (laughs) yeah with with being a powerful musician it has to be difficult to not let your influence um take too much of a part in in a group in a group project like that yeah it's got it's it's and i know it's kind of tough yeah because i feel like that's where my faults have came through yeah some parts but um you, I mean, you've been doing successful. I think that Weathervane and Better Anyway separately, aside from the fact that Weathervane was already kind of established right, right. before you, you joined, right. um, they have two totally different sounds while also still kind of being in the same field. Right. Would, would you consider them in the same? Yes. Uh, in, a, in a way, it is like a bit of a, like it's a genre adjacent. Um, we were know. literally just having that conversation. Yeah, it really is just genre adjacent. Like like a lot of those things, it just it stretches across a very large spectrum where uh sounds can kind of be interchangeable um and just making sure that like uh you're not writing something that belongs somewhere else i like the way you put that is very important because like you know uh yeah like i don't know like i know that some people like oh like you shouldn't pigeonhole yourself like it's a certain like genres and stuff like that but i don't know i feel like every single project has its place and music has its place and so like there's been certain things that i wrote when i was first writing it i was like this sounds like something that i would do it better anyway but then it's like oh no this is actually this was meant for weathermane this was meant for weathermane wow it made sense to go with weathermane and that's going to be our next record which we're in the middle of doing. We're in the middle of doing a, a full length right now, actually. With Weathervane? Yeah. Hell yeah. Which is like, oh man, like, uh, considering that, like, I don't know, I feel like I'm new still. Uh, Dude, you've been in Weathervane for like, band. what, three years now? Yeah. It, it'll, it'll be three. How long? Is, that band's been running for about. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I think they started in Seven, eight? Yeah, yes, yeah, so like seven years at least. Yeah. Yeah, like seven years at least. Well, okay, it'll be three years in like in the fall. So I've been in Weathervane for a little over two now. So, okay. Um, and, but but yeah, like I don't know. I still feel new when it comes to like creative processes, because um, we've released two songs ever since I've been in, and just been like writing ever since then, and uh, in the midst of that, released seven songs with Better Anyway. And Better Anyway has been a band ever since November. Yeah, you uh, guys have been pushing stuff out, and that is, like, honestly, it's unbelievable. Yeah, like, uh, we just keep, I don't know, we were just like, if we have a song, just write it. And if we feel like it's good enough to put it out, just put it out. And uh, finding ways to uh, make sense of our releases has yeah. been has been nice. I mean, like you know, we were able to do a split with with Overbite because those are the Springfield homies. Yeah, of course. there's a homie. And so and so, you know, we we did five uh, songs for our initial release. Did two for the split. And uh, right now we're working on our second EP, and we're also working on something else to come out before that. Jeez. Uh, and so this year, what you can expect eight songs. Jeez. For better anyway. See, this is the insider. Yeah. It's an insider. Eight songs, dude. Eight eight songs. Eight songs and one's a cover. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, like one's one's a cover and That's pretty I, exciting. Yeah. I mean like I'ma just I'm just say it because honestly, like, um I'm heavily inspired by the band Transit and uh with the passing of Tim Landers, it was like, I don't know. 
it just it felt weird because like I know that a lot of people like are inspired by like, musicians and stuff like that and um I don't know. I feel like this is like the first musician I felt like impacted by yeah. their passing uh because of it's my so weird that you say that dude. Yeah, like because of because of the genre that I play in and how much I know his music has affected my play style. And so uh, we're covering a transit song. Hell yeah! And uh, it it is it is amazing. So yeah, I cannot wait to hear Nick's vocals on that because that boy. <laughs> let me talk about like a come up, bro. I think honestly, yeah. and I've said this. I say come up yeah. as if it's like a new thing, but yeah. I mean Nick's been killing it for like yeah. easy five I mean, years now. Nick grew into his voice though. He'll 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 even tell you that. I mean like, I mean it it took a minute for Nick to really like you know be completely confident in what he's doing and i mean and even now like nick is still like you know like his main thing is like i try he's like yeah i put my effort in and whatever happens happens and i feel like that's been the like definition of better anyway is effort like yeah it's purely effort like you know because i mean all of us are just always just like yo like we're not the greatest like musicians or whatever, but like we put our hundred and ten percent effort when we play, we put our hundred and ten percent effort when we write and record, and like bro, like I don't know, we're just super excited about the next EP, but we're also excited about the uh, this little release that we're gonna put out before that. So hell yeah, yeah, sounds like a very very exciting summer. How do you have time to like actually? Th- we'll seg this uh, yeah, yeah, into yeah. my next thing. Um, yeah. Because this is like something I've been focused on lately. How, with your busy schedule, do you keep everything organized? I don't. Um, I go with the flow a lot of the time, and a lot of the time it's not good for me mentally. Um, that's something that I have to do a lot better. It's good that you say that. Yeah, like uh, you know, the thing is, is that I mean, number one, I know it takes a toll on my fiance Raven, like. You know, like, there's a lot of times where I'm not home, like, because I'm working, and then when I get off of work, I leave, and I work yeah. on music. And so, like, trying to balance that, because, you know, like, I care about her. Of like, course, and, very, you know. Very, very deeply. And so, you know, being able to balance all that, honestly, I don't know how I do it, but there are certain times where it's just, like, you just go hard, very, very hard, and then I crash. And, yeah. And when and when I crash, I need to do nothing for a while and uh but then it's just it just comes in a cycle but the thing is is that i feel like i I need to do that better like yeah i I need to i need to not put myself on the brink of just like completely insanity yeah i was just like hey like i need yo like i need to just not do anything and uh you know but yeah i really need to do that better because there's been times when like i just tell like the guys like yo look like i'm not like i'm out for like a week like just so the recovery time's not that bad oh no oh no it is it isn't a very long time it's just like it's just that whenever like we're working on music and everything like that uh i'm working on music when i'm working like right. my, my my day job yeah. you know what i mean like the, <laughs> the super funny thing is is that me and me and nick will like <laughs> we'll send uh videos back and forth we're both at work. Like we'll send videos back and forth of us just like doing like vocal melodies. So like we'll have like an instrumental, and he'll have like a couple lyrics and everything, and then he'll send like a small clip. And I'm just walking down the street delivering somebody's mail. Uh, Hell yeah! And I'm just like, I'm like okay, it just sounds kind of cool. And then like I get I get back to the truck. I sit there in the truck for a little bit, sing a little something, send it back to him, and I'm just working the whole time. And so like that's why like it gets to be overwhelming yeah because you're just like always in that shit like, yeah yeah like you know like you're constantly constantly going and and so yeah like the 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 crash gets bad but like uh you know yeah, i just need just like a week to just not think about anything that's fair yeah like i mean you know. even with like as organized and as critical as i've gotten with my time yeah. as i'm doing more things like i still have periods like that yeah my recovery time's much shorter now than it used to be because it used to be like <sighs> Don't talk to me for the next couple of months, Bob. Cause yeah, I'm not doing nothing. Oh yeah, extreme. Oh yeah, extreme. I mean, in that you know, and and that's and that's probably cause of just like other things, and but you know, like those are 
you know, those are things that we all uh, try to deal with in our best ways. So, right. So if I can give you some advice, yeah. uh, like I said, um, I, I've said this on uh, previous episodes, but like I just said, I'm getting into a whole lot of like organizing and like structuring so that mm. I don't have to think about anything. And there's been a lot of studies done on this. So the human brain can only remember so many things. Yeah. It can actually very reali- realistically only remember so many things. You are going to forget things. Yeah. So if you make checklists or use your calendar, yeah. like the moment like someone tells you something or like brings up an idea or wants you to do something, um, well, for me anyway, I'm like, stop before you say anymore. Let me pull my right. phone out. I need to get on my calendar. I need to get on my Google tasks or something yeah. so I can type it down because I don't want to have I don't want to have to remember it. Honestly, right. I, I want to focus on what I'm doing right now. I'll put this on fucking paper or whatever. Yeah. Doing things like that, I'm telling you, it's, like, it's it's a different kind of world. Yeah. Because right now, the only thing I'm thinking about is doing this podcast. Exactly. Exactly. Fuck everything else. Exactly. Yeah, like, it is very important to be able to live in the moment, like, and not constantly be thinking about what you have to do next. Oh, I ain't, I ain't missing shit, dude. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I ain't missing a motherfucker. Yeah, 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 like, and, uh, yeah, that's something that I have to you know do you have, have to remind myself of that do you have like regular practice times for like your different bands and stuff like that in your projects um yes um uh well well we well, usually usually better anyway tries to have a regular time and um with uh weather vane we know what time of day uh but it's typically we don't know if it's gonna work until the day of and uh. and that and and that gets a little a little iffy, but you know, uh, and but we're we're you know we we communicate pretty uh, often throughout the day, just so that everybody That's is good. aware of everything. And so yeah, um, uh, yeah, I know that better anyway. Tries to have like the same day type of thing, and um, you know, like this past Wednesday is it's usually Wednesday, mm-hmm. and uh, this past Wednesday didn't work out because um, John lives in Beaver Creek now or something like that. Does he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, lives. I know, I know he's with his uh, his woman now, yeah. so that's great. Yeah, like he he lives in that area now, and um, that's when the weather started getting bad, and so uh, like, we were just like, hey, like it's it's cool. Don't even worry about. Yeah, like, you don't want to risk you like driving off the road. So, um, so we moved it to uh, today actually, and so uh, I'll be doing that later on today. Tight. Yeah, uh, we have a uh, it's a battle of the bands thing coming up on Tuesday. Uh, and we also have a show um, at the end of the month with a man called Enemy. Uh, please do not get mad at me if I pronounce that wrong. I've seen that. Is like I thought it was Enemy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought too. So I'm just it, E-N-M-Y. Um, uh, you know, we are we are lucky enough to uh, to be uh, to be on that bill because uh, those th- those guys uh, really support us. And uh, and so uh, you know we were we were happy to to be a part of that. So and we're also just really happy to be a be a part of the Dayton Battle of the Bands thing because uh, from what I get, this is the first year that Sound Valley has done this. And really, it, yeah, it's being it's being hosted at the Bright Side. I don't, n- yeah, like impressive. Yeah, like I was, just, I don't remember Sound Valley and Bra in like in them being a part of anything like this. So. Uh, of course, there's always I might been, be wrong, but yeah, yeah like, there's always course. been battle of the bands and stuff like yeah. that. But Sound Valley is actually like a new thing. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, yeah, it's cool being a part of their of, uh, of their uh, battle of the bands this this year. So it's it's a lot of fun. A whole bunch of just talented bands. There's rappers, singers. Like it's oh, it so it's amazing. like wide. Oh yeah, yeah. It is extremely, extremely open. Like anybody can get it. Like but anybody can any, get it. Yeah, anybody yeah. can get it. It's really, it's really cool. So you know, being able to hear a bunch of different musicians and um it's 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 cool being able to um just hear just something different yeah experience because you know i i get burnt out on the same i haven't been to shows in like a really long time yeah um but not to say that the typical local bands i ever get really burnt out on yeah. them but i get burnt out on the types of shows yeah like I'm, so I'm going to sure. like punk shows all the time or going to metal shows all the time you right. know Right, it's old. Right, I mean, and like, let's just keep it a buck. Like, it it gets it gets a little taxing watching the same band play the same set. Like, you can, you know, yeah. Like after 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 a while, like you just you just have to just chill out a little bit and just wait for everything to just develop. And like that's why, like, yeah, like better anyway has been scarcely playing 
shows because we're in that we're in that transition right now. So you want to stay relevant, but you need, I mean, you have work you need to do. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And so, you know, like we're in that transition right now. Um, we are recording uh, our second EP with uh, Will Carlson. Uh, he's in the Dublin area. Great, great work. He he did work on on the new Bill Murray Whoa. record. Like Bill Murray's saying? fire. Yeah, like he's popping off right now. And so, like you know, it, we're extremely lucky to be able to work with him. That's so, dope. you know, uh, you know, and he's, he's in Dublin. Yeah, yeah. Damn, so close to home too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, yeah, like it's it's really cool because I was just like, hey, like you know, like we just we wanted to do something like different for us. And it was just like let's just go into a completely different environment that we're not used to, and make a record there. And, yeah, and um. And our, our our process has been to like demo things out like very very like all the way to where we could say it's like finished right and then take it there and be like is I this, remember I was talking about that yeah, yeah. it was like hey is this finished or not like yeah. let us know is this finished and uh, and ultimately he takes it to another level like like we're extremely lucky to have have him producing us so now. Um uh, there was actually two thoughts that I had. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the first one is how much do you think for your music uh, he's adding production value to it, or do you guys do a lot of the the production uh, on the front end with you guys, like in a circle? Right. Or um. Okay. Um, production wise, he's 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 adding a lot. Um, but when it comes to the like the ideas, we 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 have a very clear sound of what we. But we have a very clear idea of what we want to sound like, and he makes that a reality. And so, if that makes any sense, like, um, you know, uh, there's 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 a lot of things that we do in our live show that hasn't been like transposed into our music yet, right? And 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 he's and he's doing that for us. That's incredible because yeah. I think that that's like kind of a big stepping stone. Yeah for musicians is like to make that seamlessness between your tracks and your live. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, you know, I mean, also, also it's just turning into just like a really fun project anyway. Like, uh, you know, it's just been cool to just have as many people work on it. As, right. As like getting so many have. people involved and shit. Yeah. It's yeah, gotta yeah, be yeah. such an awesome feeling. Yeah. Like, yeah, like one of the, one of the songs, our friend Ty Moore, is the is the voice that's doing harmonies on it? Oh, that's so crazy! Like, like I would have never like, thought that. Like, yeah, unless you told me. Cause yeah, I, I've never heard die he, on a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like his 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 voice is the harmonies. It's not me. Like there's there's like there's another song that that we're doing. Like you're gonna hear uh you're gonna hear Cassie Foley on it. Like oh awesome. Yeah, like this just like we're just having fun with it, and we want everybody to just be a part of it because honestly like we're doing it for the fun like we're doing it for like the love of the art like it's just it's bringing us joy you know what i'm saying and that yeah and see uh we're about to go to break real quick but uh, i want to finish up with one thought you talking about going to um what's his name again will carlson will carlson sorry there's a uh, joshua carlton in tattooing that i I got it but uh will carlson uh so I'm under the assumption that it's a personal studio. It's yes. So the fact is, like, I mean, you, you guys, if you're watching this right now, I'm in a basement. I yeah. I have very little things. I, well, it took me a while. It looks like I have a lot of stuff, but it took me yeah. a long time to get this together. You, yeah. obviously, on your own have, you know, built yourself up as a musician. Better Anyway, Weather Vane, all came together on their own. Yeah. Um, it's just crazy to me how, like, in this day and age and in this world, anyone, like you said, anyone can get it. Anyone can literally yeah. just start whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, you really can. Like, in in and the thing is, is that like, um, there's been another thing that like better anyway, especially as gone by. Like, there's no rules to how you want to get it done. Like, you go at your own pace, go at your own comfort. But if you have your own goal you know what you want you'll get it done like like right. like you know like it doesn't it, it it doesn't matter if if you start today it doesn't matter if you start tomorrow if you fully fully believe that you will start 
don't beat yourself up over on it. Like as long as you pull the trigger, exactly. As long exa- as you do it, 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 it exactly. Like as long as as long as you fully fully believe that you will, like do not beat yourself up over like not being where somebody else is. Don't compare yourself. Never. That's really it. Never. That's it. Never do that. Like that. Yeah. Like that. That. That is honestly. It, as soon as you can free yourself from like being able to like the judgment oh Gener- my gosh. the general term i think would be judgment yeah yeah like just just j- just being able to just op- operate in your own bubble without like fearing that mm-hmm. without fearing judgment without fearing comparisons and all that stuff and just being able to just do what you want to do bro it's it's very very freeing and that's like yeah and that's that's been the defining factor of the new better anyway record is just writing music and just letting it be what it is. We don't care. Like no rules. Yeah. There's no rules to it. It'll come out when it comes out. It'll sound like what it sounds like. That's it. That's it. Man. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. This is holy shit. I think <laughs> this was the most powerful talk I've had on this show yet. Cool, man. <laughs> and that's just the first segment. We're going to, we're going to take a couple minute break. We'll I see agree. you guys in a second. Yeah. God damn. You yeah. spit in fire, dude. <laughs> Uh, w- welcome back to Studio Four Seven Five. Yes. How you doing, Marvin? I'm good. Dude, still I'm good. Great. Yes. Okay. That's still great. great. <laughs> <laughs> I do that with everybody, bro. All right. Um, I actually didn't do this at the beginning of the show, okay. which I normally do. Yeah. Pull out your phone. All right. Okay. Open your. First off, do you use Apple Music or Spotify? Spotify. Thank fucking God. Yeah. Okay, that's 3-0. and Okay, yeah. we're 3-0 <laughs> on the show. No one uses Apple. It's great. Open I used to Spotify. use Tidal. You know what I'm you know, Oh, dude. I used to use Tidal because I like Jay-Z's music, and that's the only place I could find it. For so, the longest time. Yeah, and so like I just downloaded his music and just put it on to my phone and just get Spotify. So. Yeah. But, okay, what? What, uh... So open your spot. What is your most recent play? This is a Spotify raid. Okay, my most recent play is an album called "Her Favorite Color" by the rapper Blue. The rapper Blue. B L U is his name. I've actually see this is interesting. I'm gonna add this. So what I've started to do. Yeah. Um, I put something out recently that I was uh, I needed movie request, uh, music, yeah. books, and TV shows. Okay. So uh, I'm going to add that to my list of artists. And I'm pretty sure you're into, like, lo-fi hip-hop stuff, right? Oh, yeah. You're going to love this. Um, uh, he, he samples a lot of jazz, a lot of, like, Billie Holiday and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's it's pretty cool. It, it's a, it's What's his album. name again? BLU. And that's it? Yes. BLU, her favorite color. Color, color, okay. yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it's it's really good. Um, I found that album at a very like horrible time in my life, and uh, I still mm. listen to it to this day. It's been, how long? How long do you think? Uh, like, like how long? How long what? How uh, well? Uh, how long ago did you find this music? When the when oh, the album come out? Uh, it's 2010. I found it when it came out. Nice. Yeah. Um, so uh, a while, ten years now. Yeah. Um. Uh. Two. Two thousand and ten. Uh. I was at a, a point in my life when uh, I didn't necessarily know where I was going to sleep at night, and uh, I was crashing couches for like months. Dude, you told me this story, and it's nuts because yeah. like. Knowing you, I okay. So I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Yeah. At all, yeah. you of all the people in our, I guess, similar group. Yeah. You're like the actual sweetheart. I know that all these guys are okay. like really <laughs> nice and stuff like that. Right. <laughs> but you're the actual one. Like, not well, to say you. you're soft yeah, or anything, yeah, yeah, but yeah. like, yeah, Marvin. I try. Nobody. I I try. I try to be that way. And but yeah, like you know, um, you know, after the housing uh, market crashed, uh, my my family. Uh, uh, ended up losing our our house, and uh, and they and they moved uh to to Hilliard. I had a choice, so so I so I n- n- not to misconstrue anything. I had I had a choice. I I ch- chose to stay in in Springfield, and um everything was cool for for a while, and then um uh I was uh, in a relationship, and that did not work out, and from then i was hopping couches and uh 
I I still had a choice. Like I could have always went to my parents' house in, in Hilliard, um, but I was at a point in my life when I was too number one ignorant and number two proud to oh ask, yeah that's a big to ask for help. And uh, even though my parents were uh, with all honestly, they have no problem with it. Um, and I hid it from them that that I was doing that until I got tired of it, and uh, that's when I got that job at the uh, at the hospital. That's right. Yeah. Um. Uh. And I wanted to do something about it, so uh, moved moved in with my parents for a couple months, saved up, and then uh, moved to the east side of Columbus and lived there for a year and a half until I came back to Springfield again. Yeah. So, and then you came back. Yeah. Exactly. You know. You know. I can't came came back with a different kind of mindset. And, uh, you know, uh, haven't looked back ever since my lowest point. So, Dude, I don't think – so I met you when you came back to Springfield. Yeah. Do you think that – were you, were you like, kind of hard? Were you kind of hard back then, Marvin? Around then? I was a little rough around the edges. There's a lot of – uh, there's a lot of, like, insane culture in music. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, like, music culture in Springfield. Yeah. That – um, it, it it might be tough for me to associate it with something different because I it's just the life that I've lived and everyone right. lives different right. lives and stuff. But I have a hard time associating Springfield with anything else now. Right. Aside from music. I mean, well, you know, well, not the, that that's a bad thing at all. Yeah. I mean, well, the well the thing about Springfield is that like we don't really have a lot here anyway. That's why like a lot of people tend to be like. I don't want to be here. Oh I yeah, this leave. sucks. Yeah, like I want to leave, and you know, and you know, and so like, mu- mu- musicians can exist anywhere, and so yeah, and so like, that's why uh, music can actually be a thing around here. I'm extremely thankful for it because it has definitely, definitely uh, brought me happiness. So yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And like I said, I kn- what a what a better like no better place than like if Springfield really does suck as bad as it does. Yeah. What better place <laughs> for like a dying artist than, yeah. than Springfield, you know? Yeah. And dude, I love that shit. Like yeah. if I'm not the underdog, I don't want to fucking I don't want if I'm not an underdog rat. Right. I don't want anything <laughs> to do with it like and you know, I can get I can be a business guy, you know, I can Yeah. You know, I I can fit into those shoes when it's necessary, but when it comes down to it, if you can't just like be on my fucking level, and yeah. just appreciate that I like sleeping in the fucking dirt and grinding <laughs> and fucking yeah. hustling, yeah, dude. like and just grinding a little bit, yeah, like in in and you know, like um, it's been it's it's been cool because ever ever since uh ever since then there was a little uh little bit of a stagnant period, uh and uh we've been trying to uh you know kind of have that insurgents come back and uh overbite has has been with us in that and raised by wolves has has come up on the come up too yeah and and and, you know and like we've been just trying to throw a lot of really fun shows so that people can just you know just have fun in this city and um you know and uh hopefully uh you know just grow grow the scene to where it's something that everybody can just get something positive from that's yeah that's that's really the main like goal in in any of this is positivity and just being able to show love man like you know what i mean like i know that i know that like other, other people like feel like i don't know man like i don't just i feel like people think that bands just want to be praised and like i don't know i don't feel that like i think that's because um you know, everyone has their favorite artist. Yeah. Oh, well, okay, maybe not everyone, but yeah. you know, people have their favorite artists and stuff like that. So, mm. <clears throat> musicians in general tend to get put on a pedestal. Of course, of course, of course. And and the thing is, is that you know, like the only the only thing I mean, I guess I guess I can only speak for myself though. And but the only thing I am interested in is just spreading love and just being able to just like make everybody feel comfortable when they're around me. Mm-hmm. Like, like that's 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 what I feel is important. Like, is like I want people to see me and know that, like, you know, I just can just give them something positive before they leave my presence. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. 
like and and if i'm doing it through music cool if i'm doing it through a conversation cool if i'm doing it through a transaction because you wanted to buy a shirt at a show cool like you know like anything anything like that like man like i don't know i just want to spread positivity and you know what i mean like i i try to stay on that path no matter what like no matter what that is my main focus period and i feel like this channels off into like a different thing that I was just thinking about. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, we've been in the music for a while more, more so you, you guys than me. Cause I, you know, I go in and out as right. I do my different yeah, things, yeah. but I, when I like fell into the music scene, it wasn't like I was thinking, Hey, someone before me set something up in place for me to come out to this whatever i don't even know what it was i i found an opportunity yeah. to be a part of something larger that i didn't know existed and i yeah. didn't at the moment think about that and now that we're older and i can have those thoughts um it's kind of scary because um you know it's it is up to us to pass the torch yeah. for for local music you know i think that you know all big bands start somewhere they're going to start the same way that we do mm-hmm. but I think that the music industry is going to keep itself going, you know, but no what, what, yeah. but what is not going to keep itself going residually is local music. Absolutely. So how do you think that that's, I mean, that just goes hand in hand, right? With, you know, spreading positivity and stuff. Yeah. I mean, and, and just like, and just generally a curiosity has to be there. And, and so like, that's when like, I remember people, you know, saying like, you know, like, bands that either take themselves too seriously or are just like a joke and 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 the thing is is that like uh i feel like we try to operate somewhere in the middle of that like we we uh we we want to be taken seriously enough to 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 know that this is something that we care about and uh and just and just lightly enough to where we're not going to be complete jerks about it yeah and so and, and and so i feel like i feel like that i feel like that can spark a curiosity in, in other people uh i feel like moments and uh and really really good shows and just really good experiences and uh uh and just i don't know just being able to to communicate with the people that that come by it makes people talk it it makes that curiosity just like expand yeah dude and and and, and i feel like I, f- I feel like bands do have a responsibility to to keep the curiosity up um you know like not 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 like necessarily just oh like you have to make music that people are going to gravitate to like you still have to be an artist you still have to play what you feel like you want to play and but you have to find ways to make people curious like and 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 i feel like the local scene has done that in the past year because last 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 year was probably the first active springfield year in it was many, consistent, dude. Yeah, it was many, super consistent. Many, many years, and it was really, really cool to see something that positive happen for our city. So, it is uh, extremely, extremely fulfilling to see it. So, and you know, um, like I said, I, <clears throat> I got into music when I was very young. Yeah. Um, I think I this this will actually segue into like something pretty okay. interesting. Um, so for me, my uh, my first taste, just like, okay, so when I go to you, do it really brief. Mine's actually super brief anyway, Okay. surprisingly, with as much as I love music. People okay. are baffled. Um, I didn't, my dad, okay, so growing up, my dad basically listened to Pink Floyd, yes. uh, Electric Light Orchestra, okay. and Elton John. Right. And that was it. Right. On repeat. Yeah, every once in a while it would be like random bits of like Anthrax or like yeah a Led Zeppelin song would come on or yeah. crazy shit Beastie Boys stuff like that, mm-hmm. but it was super limited. I didn't listen to hip hop. Yeah, no Jay Z, no okay. Fifty Cent, right, right. none of yeah, that. Yeah, like I was in a time machine. Right. Um, and my first CD was uh Dark Side of the Moon, the actual first CD that I ever listened to okay. and actually cared about. My grandma bought it for me. Okay. Lincoln Park hybrid theory. Absolutely. So that's absolutely that's, that's a turning point for dude, a lot of people. 
that was yeah. where I got my start in music. And I remember I didn't even have a CD player. I had a portable DVD player okay. with a screen, <laughs> okay. and I carried that motherfucker with me everywhere. Wow, man. Paper cut, bro. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and now, okay. Man. And it went from that. I wow. literally only listened to, like, Hybrid Theory. Yeah. Just that one CD because it was a physical copy. I was, like, nine. That's what you like had. Like, eight or nine, and that's all I had. Yeah. And eventually my dad started burning me CDs and stuff. Yeah. Um that had like the Beatles on it and like yeah. more oldie stuff that he didn't really know that I was <laughs> wanting more. Um, but it, it went from that. I listened to nothing but Linkin Park for like years and years and years. Um, and then the first th- other thing that popped up randomly because I knew this kid was Rose Funeral. Wow. That's a jump. It went, and I <laughs> promise, it, in a very short period of time, it was like, oh, here's this Rose Funeral song. Okay. Here, here's this Lullaby for Bees from Miss May. I. Here's, hey, John, what's your name again oh, wow. from from Devor's Prada. And I was like, what the fuck is all this? Yeah. This is music. And yeah. like, I had a very strange road to this like music because, you know, like you said, like, I mean, I wasn't necessarily, uh, I wasn't sheltered from any kind of like genres or any kind of styles or anything, but my parents you know i was around a lot of r&b and Mo- motown growing up and jazz and stuff and um whenever rap was in- introduced to me i just <sighs> fell in love with that yeah and so uh it wasn't until high school or just something around then i would say was when like my interest in rock music just any kind of forms mm-hmm. of rock music came and uh and um, <laughs> I mean, I don't really have like a, a specific album that that like did it, but I remember like I used to always watch music videos before school and stuff like that. I would always have on. Like, oh yeah, on like uh, you know VHS or yeah, wait wait VH1, was it VH1 MTV and BET. I would just have it on or whatever, and there would be a couple rock songs that I liked here and there. A lot of it was pop punk stuff that I that I liked, and so I was like, all right, cool, you know. And like, of course, like I dug what lincoln park did because they were mixing hip-hop yeah and, man and with it and i was just like this is this is cool because very, i already like you know yeah very very briefly yeah i actually since i didn't listen to hip-hop or anything yeah eventually i was an elitist for a long time yeah. didn't like didn't like rap no hip no hip yeah. <laughs> i didn't like hip-hop yeah. no r&b yeah um uh, i didn't even want to listen to pop punk I yeah. didn't want to listen to acoustic. It was metal, and that was it. Yeah, you only wanted the heavy. And but that's it. <laughs> you, you know, eventually, I started enjoying hip hop. I didn't realize that mm-hmm. I actually enjoyed hip hop when I listened to Lincoln Park and didn't know it. Yeah, because yeah, because I yeah, didn't exactly. try it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You just didn't know, it. you know, like that. Uh, Mike and uh, in uh, in in Lincoln Park was over here trying to bridge the gap in their little. Yeah, it was like thing, whole. You know would you t- would you call them new metal? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like a new metal hard rock slash thing, thing. that they were doing. It's yeah. Linkin Park. It's, it's new metal. Like it, yeah, it's really it's really what it was. And so yeah, like and and but just to just to get back to what where I was going with yeah. that, like in middle in like I wouldn't say middle school, but yeah, it was it was high school, bro. I ended up at one of the uh at one of the um Forever Sports shows. Dude. And um this was my like this was my introduction to like metalcore at that time. Do you remember the lineup? I'm super interested because that was my first show too. I don't, I don't, I don't remember the exact lineup, but I remember I saw She's a Nightmare that night. I was gonna say, was it She's a Nightmare because you know that used to be like a, yeah. a local around here. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember I saw she, She's a Nightmare that night. I might have been like 15. And uh, how old are you? 30 now. You're 30. Yes. Damn, the big 3 Yeah. Didn't mean know. to drop that on you. <laughs> well, I turned 25 today, so Look, I am exactly five hey, years behind you. Yeah. Hey, and you know, yeah, like, and so, yeah, I remember I watched She's a Nightmare that night, and the, th- and the thing is, is that, like, around then, I was really getting into just that kind of music. And um, so, yeah, it happened in, in, like, high school for me. I started to – because at that time, I really wasn't too happy with what, like, Rat was doing. It was, like – it was, it was like – I believe it was, like, the Soldier Boy era and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And uh, so my, 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 my curiosity started going up yeah. places since I, I had already established that I liked this kind of music by watching music videos and stuff before school. I just dove into it a little bit deeper and then uh, – senior year uh i wanted to play an instrument but had no 
no connections to nowhere to start or to, to, to get one or anything like that. And then my friend Aaron Cook put a guitar in my hand when I was like nineteen and uh was god Shout awful. out to Aaron Cook. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. It, was, it was like god awful when I started and I'm still not like great, but like uh That's okay, none of us are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah like and but you know, like yeah, like in I, I started learning like you know, like of course like blink songs, but like I was also like playing like jack johnson and stuff like that dude i love jack johnson yeah like it was just this super banana chill. pancake yeah like yeah that, yeah that that was like one of my first like riffs that i learned that i was like super proud like yeah of course yeah yeah and so yeah like my my whole uh my whole journey to like get to ultimately what i enjoy now is like kind of like it's weird it's 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 weird because it was almost like you know i'm 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 in love with like Hip hop so much that I was disappointed in what hip hop was giving me, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then just like was like, okay, let's see what's going on over here, and uh, fell in love with this now. Yeah, to bring it full circle, there was the curiosity. Yeah, 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 for sure. It is the curiosity, and 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 the thing is, is that when I when I saw the bands play at Forever Sports, I was like. You know, you could just tell that there's just like an energy here that these people love what they're doing. At that point, I hadn't even thought of being a musician. And, but I could tell that like they loved doing what they were doing. Like so much. Yeah. Like no matter what the scale was. And, and the thing is, is that I'm just trying to capture that joy. And that's, you know, yeah. It, that is what is important to me. I think it's insane <laughs> that, like, not only did our first show, it wasn't the same exact show, but yeah. it was at the same place, which same is place. no longer a thing. <laughs> like, how many venues, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> jeez, how many venues have we lost here? Like, a lot. Dude, it, it, they come and go, like, so bad. A but, lot. I mean, we're not even doing Lions Club anymore. So. Yeah, but that's because. Those guys are things happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll leave it there. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know all the details, but I know a little bit of it. Yeah. Um, but it's so crazy to me that our first show was like at the same place and yeah. stuff. We got two different experiences out of it, and it shows. And we're so, five years apart in age too. Yeah. So. so when you went to a show, you were like, "Man, there's so much passion, so much love here and stuff." Yeah. The thing for me, and I'm not just like doing this for Wow Factor or anything. Yeah. I went. F- the first time it was Rose Funeral, yeah. Miss May I, and Edmund Kemper. If you remember Edmund Kemper, absolutely. And fuck, they actually that show back then. Miss May I wasn't like as commercial or like you know right. trying to. They were just playing local music, and that's all they really thought about. Oh right, like they so, were they were they were just like all the other bands that 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 played. They were you know what I mean like they were they were doing their their thing around here. There was a lot of them that were doing their thing around here. But like so. <clears throat> I those bands were like so Rose Funeral and Edmund yeah. Kemper and more in particular those guys were like evil um like oh, actually yeah. like evil oh yeah and Miss Mary I used to kind of be like that now now they're drawn back a little bit using yeah. more commercial and stuff yeah they are. but for me going to that show I was like oh this is awesome I really like the energy here but what I was watching Edmund Kemper play and the vocalist needs somebody in the nose and busted their fucking nose open and I remember Shut the Hank. Dude, Hank's a bad motherfucker. <laughs> Busted someone's nose. And then, like, I remember a huge fucking, like, a massive wall, like, or a hole getting put in the wall yeah. on the side. And, like, those bathrooms were super shitty. And I was like, dude, yeah. I fuck with this environment. Yeah. Like, you just get in and get rough. Yeah, like, and it, that stuck with me. Yeah, like, and it's, and it's crazy because, like, you know, like, I started to understand the culture of it as well because I didn't know that there was a culture surrounding it when I went. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and like I felt like I had to respect it because, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I was just invited there right. by, by some girl. And so so I went and, um, you know, and I, you know, and, and I, I, I respected the culture. I made sure that I wasn't too, uh, you know, out of my element at that point. Right. And, and, and then and then further, as I understood what it was, um, you know, I started becoming involved and uh you know i mean now now that i'm 30 i'm not involved yeah super super involved anymore <clears throat> when it comes to participation at at the shows i yeah, just yeah whew. i do it sometimes <laughs> and you know i mean i go cr- like crazy yeah. so shout out to Kyle Davis I'll, i don't oh even know gosh. what that kid's doing but yeah, yeah. he was the crowd killer <laughs> and i will say when uh i don't do it often but when i do go to shows now yeah. and 
<laughs> and they're local and they're metal shows, mm-hmm. I will. I'll play the part. Yeah, man. I'll, I'll play the crowd kill. It's you need a, one. It's a part of the culture. It is what it is. It is what it Gotta is. Gotta have man. it. You know. So. Pass it on the torch, though. Absolutely. I didn't. I, I didn't pass it on to anyone, unfortunately. Nah, but nah. that's because you know, we don't. We don't have okay. a lot of like heavy, crazy stuff going on right, anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. Here. Anyway. Right. Right. You know, Dayton. Dayton has that on lock. Cincinnati has that on lock. Columbus does too. So, you know, what I mean. Dude. There are places that we can go to to enjoy that. If you guys are at all, uh, if you guys are listening to this from like random places, you should definitely check out Ohio local music because <clears throat> do the thing. I don't, I don't live anywhere else. I don't know other local music, but right. I can say that this shit's crazy here. Yeah, like really crazy. Um, let's let's see. I, uh, I. There's so many good things I've I've wanted to talk to you about. I'm gonna have to save a couple things. There's okay. a couple things, but that just means you're gonna be on again. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. But uh, one final thing I wanted to ask you about. All right. We've talked a lot of music. All right. People know that you like music. Yeah. What about this gaming channel? Okay. We very <laughs> we very briefly talked yeah. about this. Yeah. I mean, you know, me and my best friend Nick Downey, uh, you know, we just love video games and we lived together for like three years, and that's literally all we did with our time. Was just play video games and we always just wanted to just make something surrounding our love for video games and uh ended up making that video for for, for that game called a way out which is a game where uh you're two prisoners trying to get your way out of prison and uh it sounds crazy it is a strictly co-op game it's really really fun and uh you know yeah like and so so we we made the video for it before we even thought about making a channel or any of that stuff and uh people thought it was funny and so we were just like hey like let's just do this for real and uh, i've been extremely busy and i've been promising yeah. Nick things and i'm sure that nick is tired of me promising <laughs> him things and so yeah like i am here getting, we hear you nick yeah yeah like we, we talked yeah we talked a little <laughs> bit before the show we're gonna get we're gonna get you set up yeah and so i'm yeah I, i'm here getting knowledge from from uh from tim and uh and but but yeah like uh you know, we'll we'll probably sparingly put some more things out like that. Just you know, like it's fun, man. Like, what kind uh, of games? What kind of? Go- oh, I mean, you said a, a way out. That's one that you played. We have <laughs> it's it's fun. We have we have footage for uh, you've you you've played Streets of Rage, right? No, I've actually been totally out of video games for the longest time. The only thing that I've been playing is Legend of Dragon. All right, all right, all right. So it like we've we've played a lot of beat em ups and so like we've we've played streets of rage we played castle crashers which is like dude a, og like, Ca- castle crashers is really fun you have to play i don't know if it, what are you playing on ps4 or uh, we played castle crashers on switch we played everything else on ps4 there's um i don't know if it's on console yeah. but there's like i think it's called boxhead theater okay it's it's literally by the people that made Castle Crashers. Same exact game, actually. Okay. Different different game. You know I'm down. You know I'm down for that if it's made by them. Yeah. It's it's super fun. So like yeah, they got stuff like that. I got Mario Maker stuff and me losing my mind, uh, <laughs> because I die a million times in a row. <laughs> yeah. And um, shoot, like I'm playing Hellblade right now. I have that's uh that's like the God of War slash yes yeah it is. The biggest psychological mind. Uh, watch what you're saying. Have you ever played Bioshock? No. Yeah, you don't know what you're saying. No, but hey, like this, this does a really good job because it it wants you to play with with headphones on because your like because because your character has uh has trauma has mental trauma. Ooh. And uh, she hear she hears voices in her head, which. They put it in your head. So is it like, like when I'm in game and I'm listening, you know, five point one, yeah, and I hear footsteps that are back here. Is it like, if the voices that are super in, ambient and yes, if this and it. Uh, all right, so if there is a character that is like off to like your left, and it's making a noise behind you. It will sound like it is coming from behind you to the left. If you Man. if if you move, it pans it. It pan, it pans it accordingly to your to your head. Does this game have a VR mode? I don't think it does. 
I don't Dude. Think it's a, bro, it is such a good game. And the thing is, is that is that the actual like gameplay mechanics of it is super basic. Like it's 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 a thirty dollar game. It ain't it ain't no big budget really? thing. Yeah, it is it is a cheap game and and it controls like a cheap game. But it is really, really good when it when it comes to, to, to storytelling and it's like it has a thing that I'm crazy about, which is like puzzle solving and stuff like that. And it's oh, visual yeah. puzzle solving. So they're taking the fact that she has a mental issue. She she sees things she sees oh. everything differently. She she sees things differently, and you have to solve, bleh, you have to solve puzzles from her perspective. And it's bro, that sounds complicated. Play dude. Hellblade. Play Hellblade. What's it on? Uh, I mean, I have major consoles. I'm assuming. Yeah, I, uh, I think it's on everything. Is it on PC? Because I, I mean, that's what I'm. It might be adhered to right now. It might be. It's sick, man. Like you just, you just gotta play it. Like I guess I have to start a, a game yeah. to play. I. Yeah, I'm I'm over here I giving could. you I'm over here giving you lo-fi hip hop. I'm giving you It's been a first yeah. person I mean, well, it ain't a first person game, but third third person action puzzle solving RPGs. Well, it ain't an RPG neither. It's just it's just a game, bro. Uh well you're role playing as somebody. Yeah, that's true. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, and this this is a big this is a big discussion that I've had with with, with Nick Downey because I like, like Nick Nick Downey. First, what's the game called? Hellblade. It's called Hellblade. Okay, Hellblade. Senua's Sacrifice, something like that. But you, you, sure you'll, you'll get it. it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, like Nick Nick is a really really big like I want my decisions to matter type of RPG guy. Same dude. You know what I'm saying? And me like I like it. I like it too. But I also I also like just like very very good storytelling in in my game i i want you to tell me a story oh uh, two sides of the spectrum you know what I'm saying? See it. yeah like yeah. i mean <clears throat> I'm, i mean we're like we're, 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 we're like as whereas like sure like i like i like having my own um d- decisions and then and then the story play plays out i like walking through what i feel like is is a book and i'm i want to get to the end of this thing yeah because 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 whatever road you're you're leaving me on i'm on it and I'm I'm just keep going until it, yeah until it's, until it's end yeah until it's over and so like that's what like I've been super super into because I completely ran through the the Star Wars game like ran through the oh, thing. Uh, f- uh fallen fallen order yeah fun I heard that that game okay so is that game you play Dark Souls yeah is it actually like Dark Souls yeah is it really like Dark Souls no it is a lot more forgiving. But it plays yeah. like a Dark Souls. Well, so it is, plays just like. Is Dark it kind? Is it kind of clunky? If it's if it's more forgiving, that's it's okay. Yeah. But well, okay, so I didn't mean clunky. Uh, the combat is super good. Is it like? Uh, do you have over? Do you have encumbrance? No. Like a weight? No. See, those are things that I need, man. It isn't. It isn't. It isn't like that. It is a again. It is a puzzle sol- solver. Um, action, R- RPG. The 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 Dark Soul element to it is that you have a meditation spot, which is es- essentially uh, bonfire. a bonfire. A um, bonfire. Uh, if you if you heal at the at the meditation spot, it responds all, all your enemies, all all the, all, the, all the enemies. You are a up 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 upgrade base. It is a upgrade based puzzle solver game, and so so you use force tech techniques. And stuff like that in order to uh, p- progress, and mm-hmm. so, and the battles are very very similar. You're going to be doing a lot of dodging. You're going to be doing a lot of parrying. I like parrying. I don't fuck with because in Dark Souls, all you have to learn how to do is, is just roll. Is roll. <laughs> you just got to learn how to roll, bro. And I love watching like people play Dark Souls, and they they like are trying to use shields. They're like yeah, trying to parry and stuff. I'm like, bro, roll into them. Just roll. Just roll just into them. Uh yeah it 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 made it made a more forgiving version of dark dark souls while implementing the parrying in like a oh, Sekiro yeah um it kind of did that but it I mean it gets ridiculous if you put it on the hardest setting if you put oh it, I'm sure yeah, I mean if you put all it on the hardest like setting that. is just ridiculous but like other than that yeah like it's bro it's it's fun it's fun and it tells a really really cool story and uh, I ran through that thing but <laughs> but do you like Star Wars? This game made made me dive into Star Wars harder 
than what I ever have. And uh, I used to be a huge Star Wars fan when I was a kid, and I got out of it during uh, the okay. uh, during the uh, Episode One, Two, and Three tri- trilogy came out. I got out of it. I was I was huge during the you know the original yeah. the classics. Yeah, I was yeah. huge when I was a kid. Like love, oh, yeah, I love this. And then like you know, but it's crazy because like that's during the most impressionable time. Is like it was when like you know like. Uh, Phantom Menace and all that was coming out. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I personally loved Phantom Menace because I was a kid when it came out and I just thought it was really really cool. But unpopular opinion, Maul is one of the dopest. Whoa, villains. wait, th- that's an unpopular opinion. It okay, all right, all right, cool. Because because oh, okay, 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 I don't well, like Star Wars, bro. Oh, you don't? I, he, okay. Oh, all right, cool. It's on my list. I have to watch it because people called me out for it. Yeah, I mean. It is super, super understandable for you to not be into Star Wars. I it's th- and honestly, it's really just because it's so long. I'm like, yeah. why? You can have well, okay. So the Star Wars movies aren't as bad. I don't think, yeah. right? They're like they're still about an hour and a half, two hours, right? They're not long. No. Okay. They're not that long. I'll give it that. But there is still like so many things and like there's a lot of lore. There's a lot of lore. That's my problem. Is yeah. it's when I look at it, I'm like, I haven't. I have to invest time because if I get interested in this Big time it's a rabbit hole i will say though yeah. fuck lord of the rings because i'm not watching a three-hour movie dude yeah i yeah, have I'm to not watching that yeah I'm like not, i have yeah, to yeah now. i'm not watching lord of the rings yeah i i have not watched a single lord of the rings movie. patrick's gonna fuck you up for that that's okay <laughs> 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 that is fine i have not watched a single lord of the rings movie raven uh, was like was was like assault to me because I haven't watched all of the Harry Potter movies. And, I've watched uh, those. I mean, I mean, like, we 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 eventually watched them. I was like, this is pretty dope. So, That's good. You know what I'm saying? And, but but yeah, yeah. Like there's there's a lot of stuff. Okay, movies movies is something you cannot have me on for. There's a lot I'm not seeing. Like, same i mean and that's honestly it's so <laughs> weird because i you know i have a camera now i'm doing film and yeah. whatnot <laughs> i have up until now not really like enjoyed movies that much but yeah. i'm starting to you know like i told you earlier i'm starting to pay more attention to directors and how they work and whatnot yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's it's a it's a learning <laughs> thing for both of us dude we yeah. I, I have a hard time sitting down to watch movies me me, me too like i have a really hard time me i'd too. rather watch youtube or get something educational or Abs- listen to music. Absolutely. Or, or listen to me. Bro, a majority of my time is spent either listening to music or I'm playing a video game. Like, that is that is that is what I do with with my other 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 people want to watch television shows or movies. I want to listen to music or play something. Like it is hard to do all of that. Yeah. It is hard to do all of that. And and, and when, when I go down my checklist of things that I enjoy. Yeah. Movies get there eventually, but I have to I have to get through a long list before I'm like, yeah, let me throw this. Yeah, movie the on. very <laughs> last thing is like, I guess I'll watch this movie, or yeah, someone like, ropes me into it, or something. Oh yeah, like I I'm never super like, oh yeah, I gotta go watch this movie. Okay, well, okay, the only the only movie series that I'm like, I have to watch. Okay, this, this is the one. Lately. So this is the last thing of the show, yes. which I was gonna ask you anyway. Okay, I need it. Well, if if it's a series or whatever, yes. Give me a movie recommendation. A movie recommendation. A movie recommendation. Okay. Are you are you, are you into like scary stuff? Of course. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that that, that you've watched like all the like Annabelle movies that are out. Actually, no. Watch the, watch the Annabelle movies. It is it's in it's in the same uh you know, uh, what's it's it the Conjuring. Yes, I have watched Conjuring one and two. Love okay. those movies. Have not seen Annabelle. Wait, it's sick. Is Anna? Is there an Annabelle two? Yeah, like like they're called like I think I think there's three right now. Oh, yeah. there's three. Yeah, like there's like one like Annabelle comes home or something like that. Like this, oh. this is a bunch of crazy stuff now. Yeah, but like watch the Annabelle series. It's fun. If you want to watch something sports related, watch The Glory Road. It is my favorite basketball movie ever. The Glory Road. It is a Disney film as well. Oh, we like we like Disney. Well, it's really good, but it's not animated. I was gonna say we like animated I'm, Disney. Yeah, yeah, like, bro. This is this bro. This is good. I mean, Air Bud was tight. Wait, yeah. was Air Bud Disney? I no, don't I don't think know. so. Oh, no. nah, that one, <laughs> yeah, I'm nah, not sure. I'm gonna get roasted uh, for I'm that not one. Sure. But that those are your movie re- recommendations. I got your uh, I got your rap recommendation yeah. right there because you know blue uh, 
bro, I, I'm I'm actually very very excited to share blue with somebody because like I don't know anybody who listens to him. So I listen to him now. You know I mean, well, we'll find out. Yeah, 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 yeah we'll see. We'll, we'll see. find out. But I mean, you know what? It, it's on my list. I actually. I'll I'll save that one. I bet you got a big list right now, don't you? Dude, it, well it's not it's not huge. Those are my movies. Uh, yeah, it's looking decent. Where's my artists? Actually, it's rather small. Okay, it is actually rather small, surprisingly. Um, oh wow, I'm, there's a lot on there I've never heard of. Yeah, well, and and that's what I was happy about. I was like, all right, yeah. I'm I'm impressed that there's a lot on here that I don't know. There's a couple that I knew and I added anyway, like Arc Spy. I've, I've heard Arc Echo. I've heard Arc Echo too. Somebody recommended our last night. I'm a fan of their first album. I've I've listened to them, but for them, I'm I'm gonna go back and listen to their covers. Yeah. Because I never I know that they're kind of a cover band now, so yeah. I'm gonna give them a new light. Their first album sounds a lot like they're only chasing safety by our growth. So if that intrigues you. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave you. Well, I, I'm going to add under oath too, because I think that I had like favorite songs of under oath. I, nev- wait, but you've never been like into under oath. I like that. <gasps> I'm telling you, dude, my music taste is weird. The great line is all you need. Define the great line. Listen to the album. Just listen to it. <laughs> Listen to it. Just listen I to loved it. how intimate that was for a moment. Bro, it literally my favorite, like, like one. They're like my favorite, like quote unquote hardcore band. Okay, my favorite album ever. You know what I'm saying? Ever is that album. You guys have to listen to it. That's an incredibly, incredibly epic way to end this episode. Yeah. Um. Damn, Mario, you just like kind of hit me in a way, dude. Every time we talk, hey, you just like you got to cut a lot of that because I <laughs> no, dude, I don't, I don't cut, I don't cut anything, bro, nah. Because I talk entirely too much, so thank you very much. Thank no, you very I, much. I'd love to have you on. This isn't gonna be the only time though. Yeah, but yeah, but uh, where, where can they find you, Marv? Where they, on social media and, and all that good stuff? Plug uh, yourself. Follow me on all the good stuff. Marvin Dupree Jr. on there. Listen to my bands, Weather Vane and Better Anyway. You can find us on all streaming platforms, including AskJeeves.com, because you already know what it is. What? <laughs> no, you're lying. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, 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 no. No, no, I was just playing. I was just playing. I mean, but you could probably find them on Ask Jeeves. Yeah, but we are on all streaming platforms. Listen to Weather Vane and Better Anyway, please. Thank you. That's great. Uh, you can find me at uh, you can find the show at the studio four seven five on Instagram. You can also find me on YouTube under um, Studio four seven five. On top of all streaming platforms, you know Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, all that good stuff. Um, you can find my personal Instagram if you care about that at all at the Tim Duncan. Unbelievable that I got that handle right. The like, uh, the Tim Duncan. The I don't fuck with that <laughs> retired PO shit. Okay. The Tim Duncan. You can find me at the Tim Duncan on Instagram. You can also add me on Facebook. Um, I post basically the same things, so it doesn't really matter. And with that being said, we will catch you on the next episode of Studio 475. Peace.